Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Now, this is an unusual video because it's a video about a video. And to do a video about a video, I need a video. So I'm filming one. <laughs> do you get that? <laughs> yeah, I, I still get questions about putting videos together and how I do it and how long it takes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that really is what this is. But this part of the video is the actual bit I will use. So I'll cut this one off here. Right, this might get a bit complicated, but um, all I've done is turn the camera off and turn it back on. Now about filming, everybody has their own way. Um, I would never think to impose on what you do once you pick your camera, tablet or phone up and point it at something and start talking, you're on your own. <laughs> That's your bit. That's what makes the channels unique. Now, they might all have common ground and all be about the same subject or similar subjects, but you know, each person does their own thing. That's what makes YouTube great. Yeah, if you see what I mean. So, um, if you're going to do a video, most people have probably got at least an idea in their head. Some people might even have a plan. Some people might even write down notes and headings to remind them about what they're going to say and things like that. Um, I don't tend to do that. I'll go as far as saying I've normally got an idea in my head, like now, but there's no plan. I just pick the camera up, point and waffle, <laughs> as you've noticed. <laughs> You either like it or you don't. If you don't, you're probably not watching this video. If you do, you may be. Yeah. And I've always said with videos, viewing is not compulsory. Yeah. So if you're listening or watching to a video, a, a video, and it's one of mine, and you find it's a subject you're not that interested in, find another one. It's not compulsory. You don't have to stick with a video. There's no. I don't expect any loyalties or anything. If I get it, it's great, if you see what I mean. You know, people follow certain channels. I'm subscribed to well over 200 channels, all of which have ORCID-related videos now and again. I can't possibly watch them all, and some people only perhaps post a video once a month. They may, as a percentage, get more of my viewing than somebody who posts one every day. Because I only get so much time in a day, and it's not all dedicated to YouTube. Trust me. <laughs> so anyway, that's what this video is about. So first job, you know, pick up camera, point, click, do whatever you're going to do, and get something on film. Right? So that's the first bit. Tools of the trade, some sort of camera that produces a reasonable quality picture. And the only tip I will give you if you're using a camera is don't do that too much. It drives people up the wall. Yeah, if you're going to move from one plant to another, do it gently. Yeah, do it gently. Move nice and slowly. Try and hold your camera still. These are just simple camera techniques. This has got nothing to do with um, YouTube or orchids or anything. But just move slowly around. It helps people see rather than start getting distracted by, you know, abrupt movement. So move nice and slowly. So that's all I'll be filming in the grow room. The rest of it is going to be sat at the computer. Okay, back at the computer. The only piece of this that I cannot film is offloading the clips from the camera to the computer. Because the camera <laughs> is being used. You see what I mean? Of course you do. But anyway, I've offloaded clips. I always create a new folder for what will become a video and I have a collective folder. I'm very tidy minded and I clear up after myself. I just chuck that in there. Um, what I keep in here, um, these two folders, raw projects, um, that's used by my software that I use for editing my videos. So I don't get a choice about that. Um, we'll see how that progresses a bit later on. Um, so that's the folder I've just put in here. Okay, at the beginning of this video, we did this. Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Now, this is an unusual video because it's a video about a video. And to do a video about a video, I need a video. So I'm filming one. <laughs> 
See what I mean? So these are two clips I've done so far. Obviously that first clip is the, the one I'm going to work with. So they're just in a folder in my collective area. Um, there's other stuff in there from previous stuff. Um, so that's that. Next thing, load up my software. Now I use PowerDirector, it's version 14. I don't think the, the versions vary that much. Obviously the more bells and whistles the older it gets. Um, this bit to me is important. I have a prepared project. So if I open that up, it's just called Project Start, so it doesn't get muddled up with anything else. This is my basic project in which clips get inserted. Um, looks a bit basic there because it's uh, all squashed up, so we'll expand it a little bit. Um, and if I just stick that at the start and play it, you'll recognise it. That's my startup. The text on it has yet to be created. Yeah? So you'll recognise that, I'm sure. Um, but so that I don't lose that, the first thing I do when I'm making a video is save it as something else. In other words, rename it. So we'll just call that YouTube. Okay. And save that. And what I've effectively done is taken a copy, which means my original is now unaltered. Otherwise, I'll change each blinking time. If you see what I mean. Um, so in here, I've got the few photos that you see, my piece of music, and scroll down here, my text box, my watermark, and right at the other end, somewhere. Oh, it's at the top, isn't it? Come on, wake up. Is my ending clips. Yeah. Okay, so those are the component parts. So the first thing I do with this software, I'm not saying that everybody would need to do that, is my little text box down there obviously needs a title put in it. Yeah, The Rogers Orchids bit stays there, and it currently just says Project Start. So I'll just change that to YouTube. Yeah, Get rid of all the other text. Um, line that up in the middle somewhere, make it look pretty, not essential. Save that. Okay, so now now we're up in business basically. Next I need to go and get something to make a video out of. So basically I import, come here, a media file. I'm just going to take the um, first one that we filmed. So everything for videos, we called the folder YouTube. And I'm just going to pick up the first bit. Yeah. Open that, that will import it into here. And then all I need to do is drag that down there and line it up with my start. <laughs> Next comes the tedious bit in such a really short video. This is for demonstration purposes. This, this bit I'm making now won't be the bit I load because I'm still filming the bit I'm going to load. Yeah. So what I now do is go and get my watermark and drag it back. Just line that up with the end. And then go and get my end clip which is way up here, bring that back, line that up, file, save project. That is the video made. That's it. The video's done. Yeah? <laughs> Once it gets round to saving, it has to create title, phone, uh, thumbnails and things as it goes. So. Uh, that's what it's currently doing. It seems to be taking an age. There we go. The bit I won't film is this video currently is made up of lots of component parts. To load it onto YouTube it has to be a single entity. So all I do with the software is go into produce. Um, that brings up a new screen with some stats and stuff. Click start and it starts rendering the video. Okay, I'm not going to sit there and watch that because even though it's a short video, it just takes time. So I've got a lot of work to do that bit. So I'll cut that off there and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, that's just coming up to the end of that um, processing stage. Um, when it's finished, the screen goes blank so I can see it from miles away. Um, that's that software finished with now. I don't need that anymore. Yeah, so that's that done with. Um, and what that actually does is creates a file that's always called produce. 
So the next thing I do is I just rename that to match the title of the um, the video that I've just done. So we'll call that YouTube, and then because I'm tidy, that goes into Final Productions so that I know where it is, and that's where all they will all be until they're deleted, which <laughs> is usually the next day. I don't keep a lot hanging around. So um, as we go back into YouTube. Um, Many of you may not use the YouTube dashboard. I know there are facilities to upload a video straight onto YouTube without, you know, and bypass all this lot. But this gives me quite a lot of controls. Quite a few headings down the right hand side. Got the community heading. That's where all my comments are. None of which have been replied to because that's today's comments. They get done tomorrow morning. Um, I can look at my numbers of subscribers and those who make that information public. I can see them. Um, otherwise I don't. I don't look at anything else in there. There's a video manager which I use very very little but for all the videos that are loaded on YouTube I have the facility to edit them or do those things to them including delete. Um, quite honestly I very rarely use that but it, do, it does show the number of views and things like that. Um, there's analytics which you can use um, but the that I wanted to see was um, this channel here. Um, these are where you, this is where you find out how your channel is progressing. Um, and s smiley faces at the end of both of those lines means you're doing okay. And gradually, as your channel develops, more and more things become enabled. Um, you know the things you're allowed to do. Um, most of mine is active at the moment. I mean, um, I could have a custom URL, don't need it. I could do Super Chat, don't even know what it is. And the other thing is channel memberships, which I'm not allowed to do yet. I don't even know what they are, so I don't bother with that sort of thing. Um, but the thing I do look at is um, my upload defaults. Now this is handy because this like my startup bit for my videos in that software this gives me a startup for YouTube um, so you can select your privacy well obviously if I want people to see it it needs to be public you can choose a category I mean I've chosen education there's lots of other stuff in here comedy <laughs> I'm sure some people find me funny well, well there's one at least um, cars and vehicles you know there's various things that you can choose from I've you know, chosen education um, you can have how to, if you, I suppose, but that, that's what I've chosen anyway. People and blogs is another popular one. Um, so anyway, I've chosen education. That's the one I've chosen. The license, I've never looked into that. Creative Commons standard YouTube license. Uh, I assume that's the right one for me. I've never had it clobbered. This bit here is important. The YouTube search algorithm works on the title of your video the words you use in your description, especially the first couple of lines, it's called the viewing part. Yeah. So when, when you look at a video, you only see a couple of lines of the description. There could be pages of description, but you only see the top bit unless you do the show more bit. So though the title and those two bits are important. These are called tags. They are triggers to the search engine. They are important. And I've preloaded some that get used for every one of my videos. And this was using my analytics to find out what people use to find my orchids. So it can get clever you know, and useful. So a lot of people put in Roger, Roger Orchid for some reason. But also Roger's Orchids, that's my channel title, and just Orchids. So those three tags get loaded automatically. I can add to them if I choose to. Um, I allow all comments. Um, users can see the ratings for the video. They're all monetized with ads. I don't allow overlay in video ads. I allow skippable ads. And um, I don't allow automatic mid-roll ads. Those are those annoying ones in the middle of the video. So as far as the ads are concerned, the only ones I'm allowing are skippable video ads which appear at the start and the end. And they should be skippable unless they're really short, in which case they won't allow it. Um, my video language is English and it's English United Kingdom. That does affect spelling if you English UK and English United Kingdom has different spellings. Um, um, that, that's it. So that, that sort of 
is like my default for a video that's about to go up to YouTube. And um, to load onto YouTube, you just go into the dashboard and um, choose to upload a video. Select the file you want to upload. It will be in final. It knows where to go and look because I've told it. Yeah, and um, I just select the final productions, and the one we just did was called YouTube. So we open that. Okay, that starts the loading process, which is tediously slow. But upload speeds are always quite slow compared with your download speed, which is what your Wi-Fi and everything's measured on. Um, by calling my project and the file it produces with the same name, that's the name that will be used in YouTube for the video title. So that just saves a bit of typing, <laughs> keeps everything nice and uniform. And then you put your description in. Whatever you want, as much as you want, as little as you want. But the first couple of the lines is the bit you see. These are the tags, the preloaded ones that I was on about. These are important. YouTube uses these when people put in words to search for a video. If they match your tags exactly, your video will come up. Yeah? No hesitation. <clears throat> hey, you can add as many of these as you like, quite honestly. Yeah? yeah, and you end them with a comma. That's the bit that took me a long time to work out. <laughs> is how do you stop one tag and go on to the next one? It's a comma. Yeah, and playlists are quite important as well. I have an assortment. Every video I load goes in Roger's Orchids. It's a playlist of everything I've ever done. I've got orchid maintenance and care if it's like repotting or you know how to look after a certain type of orchid. It might go in there. I've got one for my dendrobiums, my monthly orchids in bloom. I, I did a separate playlist for the May updates I did. I've got one for my bonsai, not that I do much of that. I created a playlist for that specific orchid, Dimorph Dimorphorchis lawii, because there's four of us have all got the same plant around the same age and size, and each year we propose to go back and have another look. Yeah, all the orchid tags were gathered together. That was my end of season last year. Um, things specifically about the plant room, native orchids. Yeah, so there's quite a few playlists. They are useful to collect things together. And um, they're quite easy to get at from YouTube. So as far as YouTube is concerned, it, it processes, um, fiddles around, checks that you haven't sworn in it or got nasty images or anything like that. It does all that sort of thing using software. And eventually it comes up with processing done. That's why I chose a really short clip so that I can talk away and in the meantime the processing will be done. Um, this is annoying because what it does, the video, this is the video thumb, thumbnail that, that you will see once it's actually put live into YouTube. Now at the moment it's finished processing but I haven't published it so I haven't made it live yet so it's still with me. Yeah, and YouTube randomly chooses three thumbnails and it never gets it right. Yeah, the thumbnail it's got right at the start of the video hasn't got any text on it. Well, that's no flipping good. That's just a random shot in the middle and it usually chooses one near the end before the screen's even expanded. So none of those are of any use at all. Um, so I have a little trick that I do, um, <coughs> which is probably specific to me but I go back into the um, project so I just just open the project up we called it YouTube didn't we just quickly load that I could have done this earlier but I'm doing it in the order I would normally do it yeah once that's loaded press play oh. would help if we press start first press play oh Now that was unpredictable. Come on, cat. Out of the way. <laughs> uh, right, press play when I'm ready. And then once the words are there, press pause and hit snapshot. Now what that does, we'll just call it tube, 
is it takes a picture of what's currently on that screen as a still, puts it out in a folder that I've told it to do, and then it actually goes ahead and imports it because it thinks you want it for your video, which I don't. I want it for it. So it's now there. So I can now close that down. I don't need to change the save changes. And then um, that snapshot that it's just taken, which is a still, because of the quality, it's too big for YouTube. YouTube objects. So I have to go into my photo editor, which is a pain, load up that little one I've created, go into resize and take it down in size so that YouTube will accept it. So I'm effectively reducing its size. And then I can just save that away. And I always just stick the word edit on the end simply so I can find the one I want. So I save that away, close that down, and then I can go back into YouTube, which is patiently waiting for me, and use that as a customized thumbnail. Yeah? Tube edit, that's the one we've just created. Select that and open it. YouTube will load it up to here as a customized thumbnail and then automatically put it in as the video's thumbnail. Um, it's then ready to go live. Yeah, I'm obviously not going to put that live because that's a tiny little clip. You don't want to see that, you want to see all this bit I'm filming now. Yeah, see what I mean? It gets complicated when you're filming, filming. We've only got one camera. Okay, so um, if I click publish now, that will put it live. I'm going to delete it immediately, don't worry. But, uh, right, and if I now go into my video manager, that will be right up the top of the list as a brand new video. But because it's not the video I'm filming, that's not the one I want, obviously, people to see. So we'll just go in and delete that. Okay. Are you going to delete that or not? It says video deleted. YouTube's got some real major flaws in it. Um, like it can't count always. So, so that's the sort of functions. Now, not everybody uses the Creator Studio. Um, as I said, there are ways of uploading into YouTube direct from like an app on a phone or a tablet. But this is what I do. And, and it gives me quite a lot of control. Um, so that's basically how I put a video together. Um, start with an idea, a spark. Uh, sometimes it's no more than a sentence in my head that ends up being 40 minutes long. You know me. Um, film it. Yeah, Don't waggle your camera around too much. Try and keep it steady. Um, and try and make sure things are in shot. Yeah, and You're not cutting blooms in half or taking the top of your plant off when you're talking about the top of it. Things like that. That's just general you know, camera, camera work. Um, then what I do then is download it from the camera into a folder, load up my editing software, do what I want to do. That will include adding pop-ups or pictures of orchids. Um, I can insert those as part of the video. Save that away and run the production part of the software to produce a single entity. Um, go into YouTube, load it, put in a description, put in some extra tags if I need to. When it's finished, make sure my thumbnail looks correct. In other words, it has all the text on it and everything, and publish it. And that's the process. Um, when I first did a, my first few videos, that used to take me ages. The reason? I didn't know what I was doing. So it took a while. Now, I think I could actually do it in my sleep, literally. It's an automated function in my head. So I don't think about it. I just I just get on and do it. So for a five minute video, five minutes to film it, yeah? If there's no pop-ups or pictures of flowers to insert into the video, one minute to do that video, to actually put it together, yeah? <laughs> and then the processing, if, it, if it's a five minute video, the processing takes nearly twice as long, so about 10 minutes. I can walk away from that, I don't have to be here. And then go into the upload part of YouTube, type in a description, um, you know, right on the end, as always, thanks for watching, all that sort of, a, a bit of typing to do. Do I need any extra tags? You know, is this video about something specific, like Dendrobium senili? 
having that as a tag, if anybody goes into YouTube and types in the search box Dendrobium senilli, chances are my video will be right at the top of the list because there won't be many others. So those tags are important to get your videos found, as is the words in your description and the title of your video. Yeah, Most of my videos are orchid related. Having the word orchid in the title is quite important. Although I get round that by having my channel called Roger's Orchids. So I've automatically got it in the title. But I often add the word orchids in. And having the word orchid in your description somewhere will help the search engine. The more information it gets a hit on, the more likely your video is to come up near the top of the searches. There's loads of other stuff goes into that. Popularity. Um, number of comments you get on average, number of views you get on average, how many subscribers you've got. But nowadays, those are less important than they used to be. It's more about the search engine finding hits on titles, descriptions and tags. Yeah. And also, if you're monetized or not, because if, you've, if, it, if YouTube finds a video that it thinks matches the search criteria and it finds 10 of them, and it can only display five, and eight of them are monetized, it's going to pick out of those eight. And the two that aren't monetized are probably going to get left out because they don't earn any money from it. You can see their point. However, if you get a direct match, they have no choice. So like, you know, my um, <clears throat> video that was Dendrobium senilli, if somebody types that in, mine would come up at the top of the list even if I wasn't monetized because it's a direct hit. They can't avoid that. They'd be shot. Okay, so that's putting a video together and a little bit of a chat about the Creator Studio. Um, the stuff down in the analytics is um, you get, first of all, you just get an overview. This just gives you an idea of what's going on. And at the moment, I've got loads of red arrows. So it means over the, it always defaults to the last 28 days. So over the last 28 days, all my stuff's going down. Yeah? So my watch time's going down. Yeah, that's the number of minutes over 28 days. Um, my average view duration, yeah, that's going down. That's probably because I've done quite a lot of longer videos and people have been bailing out before the end. But you can use these. If my average view duration is 11 minutes, then a 30-minute video is wasted because it's not all going to get watched, is it? So would it be better to do three 10-minute videos? Maybe. I'm not mucking about with that. I'm not changing the way I work because of this. Um, I get my revenue up there. Um, number of views, that seems to be down. My likes are up, so are my dislikes. <laughs> my comments. Oh, I'll show you this. You'll like this. Um, where are we? If we go into... Uh, uh, let me go down here. Likes and dislikes. Yeah? Now, this, this defaults. It's got a little graph. But it defaults by video, yeah? But you can click on geography. This is where it gets interesting, yeah? So in the United States, first I've got 1,700 odd likes and 41 dislikes. Don't forget this is still in 28 days. Uh, United Kingdom, my next highest number, nearly 400 likes, 18 dislikes. And if we wander down here and we get to the Ukraine, that big red bit there, I've got 49 likes and 28 dislikes. There's more dislikes from that country than all the rest, well, apart from, apart from the States, which is my massive audience, basically. But that is disproportionate. Somebody doesn't like me. Well, why bother subscribing and watching my videos then? Anyway, there's lots of things you can look at um, in the analytics. They're quite interesting. Um, the one I quite like is real-time. I'll often just leave that screen up there. <coughs> just shows what's basically going on in the last 48 hours and the last 60 minutes. And that's updated every 10 seconds. Yeah? So the last video I uploaded um, a while back. Um, so far, because it was uploaded today on the 14th, obviously... The last 48 hours is the total number of views for that one and the number of views in the last 60 minutes. 
And I find this interesting because as, as you roll back past the dates, bearing in mind the date timeline's a bit odd, but we're on the 14th today. So when you get to, say, the 11th, you're safely out of that 48-hour period. And yet there's still quite high numbers of views on older videos. Not really, really old ones, but, you know, ones that are quite a few days old, including some that are getting watched, you know, in the last hour. So, um, yeah. You know, there's some quite old ones here. You know, 19, 20 views on week old videos. So, yeah, it's interesting that people go back. They don't only watch the latest one. I like that sort of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, more wine required. Anyway, a video about videos and um, how to politely manipulate YouTube in your favour without putting loads of work in. There's all sorts of things you can do to try and promote your channel and stuff like that. For me, that would be called work and I'm not doing it. Yeah, I have changed my startup a little. That seems to have worked okay. Um, but I'm not changing the way I make my videos. But it is important to think about your title, your description, the keywords in your description because keywords in the description can be hit by the search algorithm, yeah? So have suitable words in your description. And if you really upset YouTube by having titles and descriptions that are misleading to get people to watch your video, you'll get a strike. They're getting good at it, yeah? Yeah. So things like must watch latest information on so-and-so, and then when somebody opens that video, it's not. First of all, they'll walk away and probably not come back. So it doesn't do your channel any good. And um, YouTube will clobber you for it. Yeah. So the words you use in your title and your descriptions and those tags, which are the direct links to that search engine, need to be relevant to your video. And apart from that, apart from using abusive language or upsetting pictures and stuff like that, YouTube will just let you get on with your job not interrupt you and not interfere so yeah, you know you if you mess them about too much um, you can get a strike yeah which will be a serious warning um, how many you're allowed I don't know and in what period of time but if you upset them too much they will block your channel at which point you lose your subscribers and your comments and everything about your channel and in the worst case scenarios, they will delete your channel with no resurrection available. So play by the rules, keep everybody happy, and, and it all works fine. And as I said, because I don't infringe the rules, the only infringement I get now and again is a piece of music I might use, which I get conned into thinking was royalty free and available when it wasn't. Um, and I've had a couple of them with putting music to orchid shows. I don't worry too much. All it normally means is that person that owns that music is allowed to put ads on your video. Well, help yourself, mate. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> it doesn't affect me directly. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's what I get up to and some of the tools that I use. Uh, as I said, the Creator Studio in its full form like this, I believe is only available on a desktop type computer. Um, it may be available on laptops, I'm not sure, but I highly find it highly unlikely that it's available on phones because you won't get all that on a screen for a start. You, you need a decent sized screen to be able to view stuff like that. So there we go, that's that one then. I've had quite a lot of interest in the background, what's going on behind the scenes. All we see is the video on YouTube, what goes on in the background. So that's most of what goes on, quite honestly. Can't think of much else, really. Right, see you next time. Have fun with that one. It's not orchid re related really, it's more techy stuff. Well, it's not even that technical really. <laughs> I am, but I'd rather not be. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I am because of the job I used to do. Um, I don't do that job anymore, so I'd rather not be. So I like to keep stuff simple. See you next time.